Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this session which is all about an introduction to maths and double maths at Hills Road. Uh, I'm really glad you've all joined us this evening and hopefully by the end of this session you'll have a much better idea of what it's like to study maths and whether you know it's the right subject for you. So uh, my name's Phil Hacken and I'm head of maths at Hills Road. Uh, I'm joined this evening by John Williams who is second in department Hello. and and two students uh, Robin and Louise who will be helping out later in the presentation to describe you know their experiences of maths at Hills Road and how it's going to help them uh, move forward so the running order there's going to be two sections first bit is a presentation which I'm going to run through if while watching the presentation, you've got any questions, please pop them in the chat because the second half is going to be a Q&A session. Uh, so if you do have any questions, please pop them in the chat as you go. But you don't need to monitor the chat because we will read out each question before we answer it. So you don't need to worry about missing any questions that have been, that have been asked. OK, so we'll make a start on the presentation. So, so first of all, why, why you might want to study maths. So mathematical skills are, are really highly prized by employers and universities. So, you know, skills such as problem solving, obviously, but also things like determination and perseverance. You know, employers and universities know that you've, if you've done maths, you've got those skills and you've had to work hard for it. So, you know, it is a really, really valued qualification. Maths is a facilitating subject as well for Russell Group Universities, which means it's it's one of the subjects that's most commonly needed for many of their courses. So it's really is going to open up, you know, a lot of a lot of doors for you. Uh, also, in terms of earnings, so there was a study by the, uh, the Advanced Math Support Program a couple of years ago that showed that students who study further maths by the age of 24, on average, will earn more money than any other any other subject. And I think maths was fourth on the list. So hopefully, it's going to lead you into a into a well-paid job. So on the second bit, maths is at the heart of many existing and potential future industries. So I've just listed a few here, but there are many, many industries that maths is at the heart of. So computer gaming and graphics. So the call of duty, I know that is based very heavily on vector, on vector geometry. Internet search engines such as Google is based completely on matrix algebra. And obviously, there's loads and loads of subjects that use statistical modelling. And with statistics being a compulsory element now in A-level maths, you know, that's going to be really helpful in many, many industries. And then finally, you really need to enjoy studying maths for its own sake. Although it, it does have lots of real-life applications, you're not always going to know that at the time. And you are going to do some quite complex abstract theory. And you really need to just enjoy doing maths problems and, and kind of getting stuck into yeah, into difficult things. So what will I learn if so if you do single maths, that's just normal A level maths. It's made up of two sections, pure maths and applied maths. So this is one of the big differences between GCSE and A level. At GCSE you do lots of different strands, number, shape and space. Most of that is gone at A level and two thirds of the course is just pure maths, which is essentially algebra. So you really do have to be good at algebra and confident with your algebraic skills if you're going to be successful at A level. So we start with things like quadratic equations and simultaneous equations and trigonometry, things you'll have done at school. But then we, we extend those. So, for example, trigonometry, we stop looking at triangles so much and start looking at functions and identities. And then we also branch into some new ideas such as calculus. So two thirds of the course is pure maths. One third is applied maths, and that's made up equally of statistics and mechanics. So statistics, you'll learn how to analyze and summarize data, but we also do lots of probability. So we look at various real life situations and how we can fit probability models to those and then, you know, calculate probabilities and expected outcomes. And then mechanics. This obviously work links well with physics, although we probably take a different approach to physics. They're, they're probably more interested in the theory, whereas in maths, it's all about forming and solving equations. So we look at cars, we look at you know people on seesaws, 
we look at motion up in, on, on inclined slopes. We look at you know cricket balls thrown through the air. So we model lots of different situations and we we form and solve equations. So if you do maths, if you do double maths, that consists of maths and further maths. So you you first of all do everything that you've just learned in single maths, but then you also do a further maths A level that has the same breakdown. So again, two thirds of it is pure maths. And in pure maths, we, we, you build on the work you've done in A-level maths. So you'll, you extend calculus, such as differentiation and integration, a bit further. But then you'll also learn some new ideas, such as complex numbers, matrices, hyperbolic functions. So it's, it extends A-level maths, but then you also branch out into new areas as well. And again, there's a third applied maths, which just follows on from the statistics and mechanics that you've learned in single maths. And you, you basically learn more of it. So in statistics, you'll learn about new distributions like the chi-square distribution and the t distribution but and in mechanics you'll learn about circular motion etc so it just extends on the work you've done in in single maths so how does double maths work so if you study double maths in in year one for most of the first year you get the same contact time as single math students so you have to have to cover more content in the same time so uh, up until May, we just, we just have the same periods that uh, single math students get. So we do have to go much, much faster. OK, for the last kind of half term of the first year, we double up to double the amount of contact time. And for the entirety of year two, we have double the amount of contact time. But it is just that first year where we have to cover a lot of content in the same time. So by year one, by the end of year one, we've covered most of A-level single maths. There are a few topics that you won't quite have covered. And then in year two, we start by finishing off A-level maths, and then we move on to completing all of further maths. And at the end of the two years, you'll receive two A-levels at, at the end of the course. So how, how will you be supported? So we try and offer lots of support in maths. So we have our own dedicated math support assistant, okay? And they basically deal with students who need extra help. So we, we, we constantly assess students. And if we find that there's some, some students who need extra support, we refer them to our assistant. We will generally do small group sessions of four or five students and you know work through problems, support students in, in, the, in the work we've been doing and just try and close any gaps, give them a bit more confidence, et cetera. So that's, that's a full-time assistant we've got. We also do lunchtime surgeries. Uh, sometimes these are drop-in, sometimes we invite certain students to attend. And again, this is these are teacher-led. So we, we tend to react to what the students need uh, and you know help them with, with specific problems they bring along. But sometimes, particularly, particularly later in the year, we'll, we'll, we'll do dedicated taught sessions on, on things that are, that are coming up, cropping up as, as problems that we need to almost reteach again. We also have dedicated support pages on Microsoft Teams, and what, one for each course cohort that we've got. And, gem, and you can basically, students can ask questions at any point, and someone will get back to them and answer them. So because we have so many, so many staff in the department, generally somebody is available to answer questions at any time almost. Uh, so yeah, students can, can post questions you know, whenever they've got them. We also have a peer mentoring scheme. So, with this second year students mentor first year students. And generally in a, in a non-COVID world, they'll meet kind of one-to-one -one every week and just support them with any problems they've got. At the moment we're running those sessions online, but hopefully before too long we're, we're back to normal. So how, how does the assessment work? So in, in maths and further maths, it's both assessed by three two-hour written exams at the end of year two. So for single A-level maths, the way it works is paper one is pure maths only, paper two is half pure maths, half mechanics, and paper three is half pure maths, half statistics. So you see there, pure maths is assessed in every, in every paper, so it's obviously the most important thing. All exams are calculator allowed. And then in further maths, again, it's it's three to our written exams. The format is slightly different. So in further maths, the first two papers are pure maths only, and the third paper is half mechanics, half statistics. 
So it's it, both courses are out of 300 essentially. 200 marks been for pure maths and 50 marks been for mechanics and for statistics. They're all at the end of year two. Now in terms of internal assessment, we set homework each week that students have to have to complete mark themselves and submit to Microsoft Teams. So we try and encourage students to mark their own work, get them used to looking at mark schemes and, and, and judging where they've gone wrong. So each week they'll be expected to complete work and submit it to Microsoft Teams. But we also have teacher assessed homework and tests once a half term. So every home, every half term we'll set a piece of homework, mark it, and then usually we give students a couple of weeks to practice and then there'll be a follow-up test obviously to assess how well they've done with it. There'll also be an end of year exam at the end of year 12 and a, and a mock exam in January of year 13. They're the kind of major exams in addition to our half term with tests. So are there any, any other opportunities? Uh, yeah, the answer is yes. So we have lots of enrichment students can get involved in. So we have the Senior Individual UK Maths Challenge, which loads and loads of students enter. Students have, part, have usually done this at school as well, but the senior one is obviously just for six formers, and any student can enter that. And then if students do particularly well, they can progress to the Maths Olympiad, uh, which every year some students do. There's also the UK Maths Team Challenge. Now, we have very limited spaces for this, but if, you, if your student expresses an interest, they might be able to take part, and Hills Road won last year with, with full marks. Uh, we also run two trips, one, one to Maths Inspiration events, which is basically some inspirational maths talks from, pe from people who've used maths in their careers, all kinds of different expert, different careers. And there's also a Maths Fest. And then for students who want to, who need support with university entrance exams, such as STEP, which I know Cambridge asked for, or Oxford have their own university entrance tests as well, we offer lunchtime support sessions where we can you know help students prepare for that teach them things that are not on spec show them difficult problems etc and we also have, in, have enrichment sessions for our double mathematicians so because in year one double math students only get the same contact time as single math students we offer additional enrichment sessions where we can try some difficult problems extend them a little bit and just give them a you know a bit more experience of of maths so what can I do with maths? Uh, so as I mentioned before, maths is a facilitating subject, so it's, it's directly linked to many, many university courses. I've listed a few there, but there are many, many more. But all of those courses would either require maths or maths would be extremely, extremely useful for. So in terms of student performance, this is A-level, this is just A-level single maths. So uh, over the last three, this is based on a three year average. So, over the last three years, 73% A star to B high grades compared to 63% nationally, and 98% pass, pass rate compared to 97% nationally. So, those figures do compare favorably, obviously. So, what can you do with double maths? So, essentially, you're doing maths and further maths. So, there are, there are some specific courses where this would be an advantage. There's not many courses that require further maths. There are one or two, a select few universities that specifically require it. But, but generally, it's an advantage if you're interested in doing something that's got a lot of mathematical content, such as maths, economics, engineering, physics, and computing. It will give you a, a bit of an advantage because you'll have studied some of the content on those degrees in further maths, so you'll be a bit, of a, a bit ahead. You may also get, a, get an improved university offer. But generally, if, you, if you're not doing anything like that, anything that's not got a lot of ma heavy mathematical content, there's probably not much use in doing further maths. But if you are looking at any of those courses, it, it may be an advantage, although it's not necessary. You can get onto maths courses at lots of top universities without having further maths. So uh, performance, this is, these are, this is further maths performance. So... A star to B high grades is 72% in further maths compared to 76% nationally. Uh, what I would say here is we've, we've been on an improving trend in further maths. So this is a three-year average, but in our last year, results went up massively uh, in terms of value added. So we, we are moving in the right direction, and I've got a lot of confidence that in the next few years that, that, that will be higher than national average. And the pass rate is 98%, which is 
which is bang on national average. So just this is a slide about student destinations. So it just shows what math students go on to do. So the vast majority go on to university, 93%. A few go on to an employment apprenticeship and further education. And you can see there, there's a lot of courses that, that maths has led students onto. So you know, maths is a subject that takes you down many, many different routes. Okay, so I'm going to hand you over to Robin and Louise now, and we're going to talk about their experiences of life at Hills Road. Um, hello, so I'm Robin. I'm a Year 13 student at Hills, and um, I'll just go through the questions. So uh, at Hills, maths has been really enjoyable over the last year because at A level, you, you just get to see so many different connections between areas of maths and how one idea in one area is analogous to another, which is, um, and it's just way more creative. And that's just why there's a big difference between GCSE. Um, I definitely apply. Sorry, do you want to take it turns, Louise, or I don't know? Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, I'm Louise. I guess the main difference between studying maths at A-level at GCSE is that a lot more independent work is required to keep on track. Like I know um, a lot of GCSE students who are good at maths don't necessarily have to revise as much as they do with other subjects, but at A-level the independent work is really useful to help keep on track. And there are also a lot more resources available to help you with that and from the school as well as online resources as well. Robin? Uh, why Year 11 could apply is that as well as it just being something you may enjoy, it has, as you've seen on that earlier slide, it has so many opportunities no matter what you want to go into. So it's really keeping your options open. And maths at Hill specifically has amazing support with um, all of the teachers and the uh, upstairs that's uh, the drop-in session that you do. There's so much help for maths. Uh, I guess question four has already roughly been covered by Mr. Hacking as in like the different career paths, but personally I'm planning to study maths at the Russell Group Uni and most of them require maths and further maths so I'm a double maths student and I wanted to take double maths at uni to keep my career options open so I have more choice in the future. So yeah that's why I'm applying to uni. Okay thank you very much uh, Robin and Louise so we're going to head into our, onto our Q&A section now. So in a minute, I'm going to hand over to, to John, who's going to answer any questions that have come up. Uh, if you, I don't know how many questions have been. Uh, if you don't get your question answered, don't worry, because we've got all your contact details. So we'll be, we'll be able to contact anyone who doesn't get their question answered uh, with, with the answer. So, John? Thank you. Um, right, well, I've been watching the chat while um, everyone else has been talking, and there have been some fantastic questions. Um, it's really nice as well that people have been upvoting the most popular questions, and so I'll try and answer them in the order of popularity, um, but hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get to everyone's questions. So let's start with the top one. It says, um, Madison asked, uh, is GCSE Further Maths valued on the course? Well, the short answer is yes. It's really helpful because a lot of the stuff that the Further Maths a level covers, Further Maths GCSE covers, um, is the sorts of things that you'll do in the first year of your a level whether that's a single maths or the double maths A-level, you'll come across quite a lot of that content very quickly when we get into year 12 stuff. So it's a huge advantage. You don't need to have done it. It's not a requirement that we'd make of anybody, but it is a massive, massive advantage. It's like seeing it before it becomes, you're seeing it twice. So that when we teach you it, you'll go, oh, I remember doing that in GCSE, additional maths or further maths. So it's a huge advantage to have done so. Yeah, it really helps. Um, uh, uh, Bernusai, is that right? I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. It says, uh, how many people are in an average class? Um, typically, classes range from about 16 to 24 students as a maximum, so the average is somewhere around about 20. 
Um, Malcolm asks, does the double maths course count as one or two A-levels? I saw quite a few variations on this question during the, the session. It says, also, if you choose to take double maths, how many other A-levels can you take? Double maths counts as two A-levels, okay? And so if you choose to do double maths, you can normally take two other A-levels alongside it. Uh, so actually, I might throw this quickly over to Robin and Louise. If Robin and Louise, you wouldn't mind sharing us what other A-levels you're actually taking? Um, so I'm doing computer science and English literature, so that's a, a different combination. Louise? Oh. I'm doing chemistry and physics, ah, yeah. which is the classic science. Yeah, the classic yeah. combination, yeah. But we do want to get a lot of um, mathematicians and double mathematicians doing uh, the other STEM subjects, so physics, chemistry, biology, but as Robin's just shown you, there's, that's absolutely not a, a requirement. You can literally pick it with anything else you like. But typically, double mathematicians will pick two other subjects to go with it. Okay. Um, Lucy makes it, this is a great question, Lucy. It says, how can I choose whether to do double maths or single maths? Good question. Um, uh, and I think the answer there is something that um, uh, Mr. Hacking mentioned earlier which is, it depends really what you want to go on to study at university. And I know how difficult it is to make that decision sat, sat at sitting at home right now when you know, obviously you haven't even done your GCSEs. Um, but typically, double maths is particularly useful for um, mathematics, obviously, physics, engineering, computer science, and economics, um, all of which, especially at university, require quite a lot of mathematical content. Uh, so if you're planning on doing something along those lines, then it's extremely helpful. Um, of course, something you can do is always start double maths, and when you've got a better feeling for what you want to do with your career or university, you can always move to single maths if it's not something that you're going to need. Okay? Uh, Amy says, what grades do you need at GCSE to study maths at Hills? Uh, okay, now I'm, gonna, I'm looking at Mr. Hacking to make sure I get this right. Uh, <laughs> it's a grade 7 for maths and a grade 8 for double maths. Is that right? Mm -hmm. He's nodding, fantastic, yeah. <laughs> okay, Emma, another great question, Emma. Um, is maths valued for medicine? Great question. Um, the short answer is yes, because typically um, medical applications require two out of three um, A-levels, which are biology, chemistry, and maths. Okay, that they don't typically mind which two of those three you're doing. So you could maybe do biology and chemistry, or maths and chemistry, or maths and biology. So it can be very helpful. Um, something else that comes up for medicine is that um, some students are asked to do the BMAT, which is a kind of a pre-interview medical test, like a, like a almost like a, an entrance test for before you get your offer at university for medicine, and that does have math questions on it. Okay, so they're, they're typically not super hard, um, but it can be very helpful to help you do that as well. But yeah, generally speaking, yes, it's just as well valued as chemistry and biology are. Uh, Hannah says, which exam board is used and how many papers will there be? Um, the exam board's AQA that we use, and as I think uh, Phil said earlier, there are three papers for each of the A-levels, so three for single maths and three for double maths, and you do all of them at the end of the year. Uh, just to go back over what Phil was saying, that for the single maths A-level, you do one pure maths paper, and then you do two maths papers, which are half pure, half one of the two um, applied mathematical topics, so statistics and mechanics. And for double maths, you do um, two pure papers and one paper, which is half and half statistics and mechanics. I think that's right, if I remember correctly. Andrew said, oh, wait, uh, just looking at questions that are getting voted up. Uh, Leo says, uh, I read on your website that you need six, nine to do double maths and seven, eight for four A-levels. I'm assuming this is a points total on GCSE. Uh, does that mean uh, double maths plus one other A-level counts as three A-levels for university? Um, double maths counts as two A-levels. Uh, so if you're doing, say, double maths and uh, two other subjects, that is definitely four A-levels. Um, but the typical university offers are only three A-levels. And so that's why I said that um, we only really uh, recommend going all the way through with double maths if you're looking at one of the courses at university that really wants it. Um, because otherwise you're essentially doing an extra math angle that isn't necessarily going to help you get to where you want to go. Um, with regard to the average points um, part of that question, I'll be honest with you, I don't know the answer. Um, I think you'll find it in the admissions policy on the website. Um, 
Andrew asks, uh, does Hill Road offer mathematical challenges such as the Senior Maths Challenge and the Senior Team Challenge? Yes, that's definitely something we do. We enter students every year. And a few years ago, I think if I remember correctly, two years ago, we had one of our double mathematics, double maths students go all the way to the International Maths Olympiad in Brazil. And I think they came second, if I remember, in the entire world. So uh, yeah, we're a good pedigree for doing um, maths enrichment and maths challenge stuff. Um, Alistair says, how many people, this is another very good question, Alistair, how many people take further maths then drop it for single? Good question. Um, it varies year on year, um, but certainly what we encourage students to do as the course progresses is to kind of keep an eye on what they're planning to, to do, what you're thinking about for university, because quite often your choices that you make or your um, ideas for what you want to do will change over the course of your A-level study. That's very typical. Um, and so if you feel at some point um, that maths, double maths isn't really for you anymore, either because uh, it's not something you need or it's getting a bit tough and you'd rather just focus on the single maths for the course you want at university, that's absolutely fine. We have students moving from double maths to single maths um, in year 12 and again in year 13, there's, there's no problem with that if you needed to. I couldn't tell you the exact numbers though, I'm sorry, it varies year to year. Um, Lewis says, uh, are the classes mixed ability or settled or setted? Um, it's a good question, Lewis. Uh, they're all, um, it's, I suppose you could say they're all mixed ability because we don't stream students. Although what I would say, obviously, two things is firstly, everybody in that class will have a level seven or better at maths. So it's pretty rarefied atmosphere anyway. And double mathematicians are taught in their own classes. So if you're doing double maths, the only other people in your group will be other double mathematicians. So um, in terms of we just like to keep them together, so obviously we can teach, as Mr. Hacking was saying, at a faster pace and go through the material a bit more quickly. Um, but so there's no, there's no streaming or setting like you'd have at uh, GCSE, potentially. Uh, Bra says, uh, how many students apply to do maths at your college and how many get accepted? Goodness, that is a very good question. Uh, I think typically, and I'm, I, I wouldn't, I can't swear 100% of these statistics. I think something like between, on an average year, somewhere between 50 and 80 students apply for purely maths subjects at university. So just a maths or maths and a secondary subject. Um, I don't, I honestly don't know what the acceptance rate I can find out if you want. Um, but generally speaking, they tend to be quite aspirational. Most of our applications for maths specific courses are to um, Russell Group universities. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't say how what the acceptance rate is. I can find out if you need. Um, Eleanor says, uh, does maths pair well with sciences like biology and psychology? Very good question. Um, maths, yeah, generally speaking, one of the things you'll find, Eleanor, is that um, biology and psychology, as you progress further through both the course and beyond A level, have quite a lot of statistics in them. There's a lot of analysis of data that you might do off the back of an experimental uh, or experiment or a, a survey that you're used to finding out stuff about uh, people's behaviors or biological systems. And processing that using the statistical skills uh, is very much part of the course. I think actually psychology does teach one specific little tiny bit of the maths available, I think called chi-squared testing. Uh, sadly, I don't think either of our a math students is doing biology, right? so unfortunately they can't tell them tell you about it there from their experience. Um, but generally speaking, yes, it's very useful for both subjects. Um, another question says, is it possible to take double maths, physics, chemistry, and biology for A level? Um, I, I don't have a name for that person's question. And uh, the answer to that I think is no, because typically we don't allow students to do more than four, and obviously double maths counts as two complete choices. So it's like double maths and two others. It's very, very rare that someone would do five A-levels because uh, there isn't really any requirement to do five subjects in terms of how you'd apply with it to university. Uh, Harry says, do you recommend double maths for a student aspiring towards medicine? That's a good question, Harry, and we get that one a lot. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I think the answer is probably no, because um, no university uh, that offers a medical course will want you to do double maths. They won't make it part of the offer. and um, therefore probably better to just do single maths. It just allows you more time to focus on getting that absolutely right, because honestly, anything you learn in the double maths course, if you go on to study medicine at university, you won't need. And so it doesn't really benefit you to do double maths if you're planning to study medicine. Um, Yi Yi asks, uh, how much will FSMQ help you in A-level? 
I think I kind of answered that earlier. Um, it's uh, very similar to the GCSE Advanced Maths um, course, but it's extremely helpful. It really gives you a big advantage as you're getting started in the Year 12 Maths course. I don't know, Robin or Louise, did either of you do the, um, the Further Maths GCSE? I did it and it was helpful, but not necessary. So, yeah. Louise, did you do it? Louise, did you do? Um, I didn't think no, you anyway. But I, I suppose in a way, that's actually kind of what I was hoping you'd say, oh. because we've got some very, very capable mathematicians, both looking to apply to maths at either, you know, one of the very best universities in the country, and one did it and one didn't. So by the time you get further into the course, uh, the advantage that it gives you does wear off, obviously, but it does really help you. Uh, did you find it useful, Robin, just to kind of like kind of cushion the blow and transition? Yeah, it's quite nice. It's sort of introduced um, a bunch of things like different creation, for example. I can't really remember, but it definitely helped within the first uh, few months, I suppose. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, William asks, would single maths go well with economics? Uh, I can, uh, from personal experience, uh, I can say the answer to that is yes. Uh, I used to work in the uh, financial industry before I became a teacher. And yes, absolutely, um, maths is very helpful for economics. If you um, go on to study economics at university, quite a lot of economics courses ask for, for maths as another subject that you're studying at A-level. And for some of the very best places that you might study economics, like the London School of Economics, uh, I think they quite often ask for both maths and double maths. So yeah, very, very helpful indeed for economics. Uh, George asks, if I apply for A-level maths, will I be able to switch to further maths if I achieve a better grade in my actual GCSE? That's a very good question. I actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Phil to answer that one because I'm not 100% sure on how that would go. If you somebody someone applies for maths, can they switch them to double maths if they do well in GCSE? Yeah, so you, well, you can you can request it, and the 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 vast likelihood is you would be allowed to switch. Uh, what we can't guarantee course changes. So what when we get our applications in, we we decide how many classes we're going to run based on projected numbers. So we'll we'll get our applications in, and we might have like twelve or thirteen double maths classes. You can then ask to switch, and as long as there's room in double maths, you'll be allowed to do it. So. Because we have so many students and so many groups, it's very unlikely that you wouldn't be allowed to switch. But I can't absolutely promise. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, John Jay, I hope I pronounced that right. I'm sorry if I didn't. Uh, would single maths be enough for engineering or should I go for double maths? That's a very good question. Um, typically, the answer is yes, that for most engineering courses, a single maths A-level is enough. If you've got your eye on some of the Russell Group universities, um, then you may want to consider double maths uh, because they do like, they, essentially engineering, uh, the higher you go up in engineering, uh, the more mathematical it becomes. And obviously you'll encounter some of the things from the further maths course in your engineering degree. And so it does obviously give you a big advantage. Um, if I can digress to some students I had last year, for example, I had several students in my further maths class who were going on to engineering through degree courses. Um, their offer from university didn't require them to do it but they were very keen to persist all the way through to the end because they knew how much help it would be in order to have that kind of first-hand knowledge. It's, I suppose, in a way, it's a bit like doing the uh, additional maths GCSE gives you a bit of a leg up when it comes to the A-level. Having further maths would certainly help in the transition to an engineering course. Okay. Jade says, uh, what subjects do you suggest taking with maths and further maths? What a <laughs> great question. Wow. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. It's, uh, my advice, honestly, Jade, is to go with subjects that you enjoy. Um, as you've seen from both Robin, Robin's nodding, because um, I've mean, seen, you know, Louise has picked the kind of the very classical um, kind of science, uh, technical based route with, uh, is it um, physics, chemistry, and double maths? Is that right, Louise? <laughs> Yeah, she's, yeah, there we go. And whereas Robin, as we mentioned earlier, has gone for a completely different set. It's, what did you, I can't remember what you said, Robin. It was English and computer science. Is that right? Yeah, perfect. And so, yeah, it, it's really just down to what you want to do. I often say to students at open evenings, uh, maths is like black. It goes with everything. It doesn't matter what you're <laughs> studying. No university is going to look down on you for having a maths A-level. I've had students go on to do history, archaeology, um, dance, 
um, music, all manner of subjects, and all of these were either single or double math students. And so it's good for anything you want to do. It's a really useful thing to have. Uh, Alistair, another really good question. From fantastic questions, by the way. Alistair says, what careers does further maths unlock? Um, well, typically, anything with a strong technical element. So obviously sciences, any of the sciences is very helpful. Um, specific careers, obviously things like accounting, anything in the finance industry. Like I said, I used to work in the finance industry, worked for banks and uh, the stock exchange, things like that. Um, very useful computers and computing, IT, anything in the technology industry, maths is incredibly helpful for that. And um, Mr. Hacking mentioned earlier that quite a few very major pieces of um, technology. I think think uh, John has John, John has gone, so I think I will take I'll take over and, until John returns. So uh, Imogen's asked a question: What kind of grade slash level do you have to be able to do double maths without struggling? It's a very difficult question uh, because all, all double math students have an A or a nine, uh, and often it's difficult to tell based on GCSE because GCSE has a lot has a wide range of content, such as as I mentioned before, number ratio, shape and space, and you may be you might be really good at those, but those don't come up necessarily in further math. So it's very difficult to tell. Robin and Louise, what did you get in your GCSE? Did you get nines or eights? Nines. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do know, though, of students who've got a nine and have struggled sometimes and students who've got an eight and not struggled. So I think it, it, Mrs. Williams is back with us. I so am, it's, sorry, but I don't know what happened there. I don't think it's as simple as you're going to get a nine, you're going to be fine with it, or you're going to get an eight and you're going to struggle. I think, you know, something with an eight are fine, some with a nine struggle. So I think it's a case of just seeing how it goes. And if you are struggling, you know, you can drop down to single maths at any point, but it, it, it's very difficult to give you a definitive answer based on grade because of the fact that GCSE maths only tells you so much and further maths is just so, so different. Do you want to take over again, uh, John? Yeah, sorry about that. I, I, there's, me, there's me talking about careers and technology and my technology <laughs> just suddenly stopped. Uh, okay, there's only, sorry, only a couple of questions left by the looks of things. Um, Emily says, what percentage of students drop double maths in the first year? Gosh, um, I honestly don't know, Emily. I, I think it's not that many. Typically, we have uh, roughly 250 students um, doing double maths in year 12 and something in the region of 200, 220 doing it in year 13. So between 20 and 30. Uh, it's probably about 10% of the total. Would you say it's about fair, Phil? I think it's probably slightly more than that. Okay. Uh, but I think so I think last year we started with uh, 15 sets and I think went down to 10. So I think maybe a third, maybe a third dropout in the first year. Okay. Uh, okay, what else have we got? Um, so I think Emily's uh, answered that one for Emily about the percentage of students who drop out. Uh, Rahan says, how many students get into Cambridge to do maths? Gosh, um, typically, it varies so much year to the year that the, the process for um, getting onto the Cambridge Maths course, which is one of the most competitive university courses in the world, uh, is actually quite layered. So the first thing you have to do is a pre-interview exam. Um, if you pass that and get an interview, you then uh, have to pass the interview, which is very technical. They ask a lot of maths questions. And one myself, one of my colleagues, we do a lot of um, pre interview kind of mock interviews to prepare students for the kind of grilling they get. Um, if you get through that and you get an and you get a, an offer, then that offer will include two uh, extra exams on top of your A levels called the step exams. And they're extremely difficult and uh, they kind of take the maths in a really problem solving direction uh, based on the stuff that you study at A level. Um, and again, myself and one of my colleagues, we run the sessions for that to help you prepare. So there's a lot of hurdles to get over. So we get a lot of variation. We typically have something like about a dozen offers every year, roughly. It's, that's very ballpark because it varies so much. And I don't know how many of those go on to be successful in terms of getting in. It varies, varies so much year on year. I really couldn't say for definite. But we certainly have a lot of people every year applying. Um, I think we've got something like about 50 applying for maths at either Oxford or Cambridge this year. So fingers crossed for all of them going forward. Hopefully they'll be fine. Um, what else have we got? Uh, 
So Emily's, I think I answered about what percentage drop. Uh, Abra says, if my predicted grade is seven and I get a seven in maths, will I be guaranteed a place for maths in your college? Um, I think the answer to that is yes, Phil, would you agree? Yep. Okay, that, that, that was easy. Yep. Uh, um, I think this might be the last question, uh, which is, what are the best four A-levels uh, to do for medicine? Maths, further maths, biology and chemistry or maths, biology, chemistry and physics? Good question. Um, I think I said earlier that really the uh, medicine likes, there are three A-levels that they particularly favour, which is biology, chemistry and maths. Um, so my advice would be to make sure if you're uh, already thinking about medicine to apply for those. And if you wanted to try and do double maths as well, you can, but you must remember that it's not really going to be of value when you get to the point of applying for university. No university applications will ask you to do maths. Oh, sorry, no university applications will ask for double maths, uh, and so it doesn't really help you. Um, there are some quite stringent conditions if you want to do four A-levels, which don't include double maths, and so if you meet them, you might have the opportunity to do so. What I would say on a personal note is, remember that um, most university offers, in fact, I think more or less all university offers, with a very small number of exceptions, are on three A-levels only. So doing a fourth one is great, but ultimately, once you get to university, it will only be your best three that are going to matter. Um, and so those are the three that I'd focus on if you're thinking about medicine, biology, chemistry, and maths are the three, kind of the top three choices. Um, let's see what else we've got. Uh, Carolina, I hope again I pronounced that right, says, would having done statistics GCSE and further maths GCSE assist with further math? Assist with further math? Absolutely, yes. But um, I've said that a few times already at the end, you're absolutely right that the stats GCSE is very helpful because you cover things like, I believe, uh, the normal distribution and some probability and statistical modelling that we'll come back and cover again in the A-level. So yes, it's extremely helpful and definitely the same thing is true for uh, GCSE additional maths or GCSE further maths, which I think are actually more or less the same GCSE, but just for some reason, different examples give it a slightly different name. I don't know why, but yeah, they're both really useful and they cover a lot of the kind of early con content in year 12. Um, Ariana says, if you are predicted to get an eight and want to do further maths but get a seven, can you still do it? Uh, that's a good question, Ariana, and I think the answer is probably no, because our minimum requirement for further maths is an eight. Okay. Um, Elliot says, how lenient is Hill Road with achieved grades in maths? If you get a seven, are you still eligible, to, eligible for double maths? Well, again, I, I, I think that's right in saying, Phil, that typically we'll only accept Students with an eight for double maths, is that right? Yeah, so we, ha we have to stick, st we have to stay strict, strict with the entry criteria just, just because to be fair to all students, if we kind of, if we start allow if we start deviating from our entry criteria, obviously we've got to apply that to everybody. So we do have to stay strict that it's a seven to do maths and it's an eight to do, to do double maths. Just to kind of jump back in, um, I think to give you a sense of perspective, um, the provision we make here for maths students um, is over half of all the maths A-level teaching that takes place in Cambridgeshire. We have something like, I think, Phil, if I'm right in thinking, it's about 1,200 students in the college do maths, roughly. Yeah, I think it's more, actually. <laughs> yeah, you might be, yeah, which is a little bit over half the entire college does maths. So um, we do a lot of maths teaching here, and obviously, therefore, we get a lot of applicants. So obviously, we have to be as kind of... Um, fair to everybody as we can when it comes to applications. Um, and there, I, again, I'm sorry, I hope I pronounced your name right, uh, says, how many maths teachers are there at Hills and what resources are available in the faculty? Um, there are 18 maths teachers, I believe, I think that's right. Um, and we, um, we I, I think I always describe it as an embarrassment, embarrassment of riches. We have uh, two Cambridge graduates uh, on, as part of our faculty, at least one, possibly two, I think, Oxford graduates, I went to Durham University, we've got a plethora of people from Russell groups all come here to teach. Um, so yeah, there's uh, some uh, some very clever maths teachers here. Um, in terms of facilities, we have a dedicated, I, I'm pointing, I don't know why I'm pointing, <laughs> we have a dedicated computer area just for our use um, with a class full of uh, computers that we can use, which are very helpful for when we're doing statistical analysis. And all of our classrooms are fully kitted out with um, whiteboards, um, not just for our use, but for students' use. Um, and I don't know if 
Robin and Louise uh, have had experience of this, but we do a lot of collaborative working where we ask students to work together in groups, um, doing problems on big whiteboards so that they can help each other and see how it works. I, and Robin and Louise, has that, has that been a useful kind of experience? Is that a part, of, a part of it? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, recently, obviously, we haven't been doing it so much because of the virus, but it, it's very helpful and to work with others. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and what else have we got? Um, I think I've got time for a few more, and we may be running out of time. Uh, so I think this might have to be the last one. Um, yeah, a good question, actually. Um, Ariana says, um, what online resources are available to assist students in their study? That's a really good question. We have uh, two um, online textbooks that we have a subscription to. So one based on the Oxford, uh, Oxford University Press and one from Cambridge University Press. Um, we use them a lot uh, and they're very, very helpful. And of course, you have access to them at home or on your phones, so you can look at them whenever you need. We, as a department, um, produce a load of resources and materials ourselves. Uh, we have a shared, a kind of a shared area on a platform called SharePoint, and we upload a lot of um, past papers and revision materials and resources that students can use there. We also produce revision videos. So during this kind of the COVID period, we were doing a lot of uh, recorded videos so that students go back over topics and uh, review previous lessons and go back over topics maybe that they studied last year to help them. Um, we have online support, so you can just type in a question to our um, math support assistant and he will answer your questions as well. We can do, we do Teams meetings with students uh, so they can uh, chat to us about problems online as well. There's a, a huge amount of support that we offer online and fingers crossed when everything gets a bit, back, a bit more back to normal, we can offer the same kind of provision face to face as well. But yeah, there's a lot of online stuff that you can use. All right, I think okay. that's it, so I'm just going to hand back to Phil. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. So this will be recorded and it will be available on the uh, on the college website after half term. So hopefully that's been useful. If you've not had your question answered, don't we? We'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. So thank you very much. Have a good evening.